Scotty Scott here with the Lone Star Plate, premiering one of my favorite dishes from Fix Me a Plate. It is the sh blackened shrimp and fry polenta. It's one of my favorite dishes out of this book because it combines the textures of a nice crispy fried polenta with that hearty, soulful goodness of a big old bowl of shrimp and grits. Enjoy. So tell us about this uh, this dish you're making. So this is uh, it's from the remix chapter, as I call it. Um, it's kind of really what I what I what I do. I like to take classic dishes and uh, kind of put a spin on them. And so with your normal shrimp and grits, it's a very it's a nice creamy hearty dish. Uh, and in this case, I'm taking the grits or the polenta. And I'm, um, I'm cooking them with some cheese and some stock. Put them in the fridge uh, for a couple hours. And then I'm gonna slice them up into uh, squares and fry them up. So it's gonna have a nice crispy uh, texture to it. Oh man. Yeah, that sounds delicious. How did you come up with this dish? Like, just. Someone request it, you made it, just R&D. I think I had some, some polenta somewhere and I was like, this ain't nothing but grits. Oh, shrimp and grits? Oh, okay, I could put a spin on it. That's really what it boiled down to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I learned early on in cooking, like from some chefs I worked with, which uh -huh. was take something familiar and give it a twist. Yeah, absolutely, exactly. That's, that's, so that's really my goal, really. It's just to uh, put a new spin on stuff. How long you been cooking? Uh, I'd say all my life, really. But uh, you know, I really got into it in terms of like uh, doing uh, catering and personal chef stuff, probably about seven years ago. Oh wow! Yeah, it's it's been been a bit of a journey. I, I picked it up and I had to stop for a while. Because work got crazy, and then I dove back into it. Yeah, that happens. I'm, I'm out of it myself. Say what? I said I'm out of it myself for yeah. a couple of years now. Yeah, work is getting crazy again, and I don't know. I might have to tell them to kiss my ass this time. <laughs> <laughs> so what made you want to do this cookbook then? Uh, I, well, I'd always wanted to do a cookbook. I guess that's kind of a chef's dream, right? Yeah. Yeah. A cookbook. And, uh, and the publisher reached out to me. It was like, hey, you want to do a cookbook? So, Oh, that's nice, yeah. right? They're coming to you. Well, that's one of those things. You know, the publisher, they've got, they've got a formula. You know, I've got a decent social media following. Yeah. I've got my own website, so I can do kind of the heavy lifting for the marketing. Sure. And they understand that, so. I think no. that's what a lot of publishers and are looking for, producers, right? Like somebody that already is somewhat even established a little. Yeah. And then working with you, whereas opposed to just finding someone with talent that maybe has no, you know, no following. Yep. Absolutely. And giving them an opportunity. Absolutely. And Which I get both, right? Because if someone like yourself who's worked really hard to build up something on their own, it's nice to get a little, you know something for that right a little recognition for that so yeah, I get absolutely it. absolutely and you know I mean it's my shit it's my baby so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna work Tech hard it, right? to yeah. promote it yeah. you know myself you know totally regardless of what they do I'm always gonna be looking to push it so yeah that's a good point that's definitely a good point and that was kind of like my model going into it i was like okay y'all aren't giving me like the royal treatment here you're like this is a book do something with it so my goal was like to just okay exceed their expectations basically do everything i could to make it more than they thought they were going to get out of me All right, so. how long did it take you to put the book together 
Because that's a big cook book. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, after the fact, talking with other chefs, uh, a friend of mine that uh, has got a book out, she was like, yeah, I have a two-year process. You know, I, 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 wow. I have a concept in mind. I shop it to different people, and then we go from there. Uh, I did mine in like 10 months, maybe. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, that's still yeah, it a was, long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's right, with right. a full-time job and with, you know, time yeah. and all that good stuff. So totally. Next book, it would not be that way, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. So what, what was the... You know, like on a movie, right? They'll have like director's cut or deleted uh -huh. scenes. Are there any like quote unquote deleted scenes from this book? Uh, deleted recipes? Not really. Um, there are a couple in the dessert category because I'm just, I mean, I'm not a baker. So that was really kicking my ass. <laughs> uh, that really kicked my ass. It's a different kind of cooking, right? Like baking it's a whole is... Different, it's a whole different animal, you know? Yeah. It's very precise, which is not my, you know... Totally. Feel it, smell yeah. it, hear it kind of a deal. <laughs> uh, and there were a couple, you know, it's a soul food cookbook. And, you know, to be honest with you, there's some of these blur the line with soul food slash southern. And there were a couple in my remix chapter that... I was like, this saying, this is not... It's not soul food nor southern. I'm trying to force it in there. So, yeah, there are a couple of things like that, you know. So you had pretty good control over. Yeah, you what know, was going in for the um, most part? I did, and you know, once again, they've got you know, like, so they wanted a specific look for the pictures. Like, you know, some of my stuff on Instagram is pretty focused in it like we don't want to be too close it's too intimidating we want to be you know it has to take up this much of, and you know so oh, interesting oh 60 wow. recipes 60 pictures very precise like even the cover i didn't really like the cover but they had very specific things we know seafood on the cover could have certain colors on the cover oh that's so interesting yeah i mean it's like you know i don't i don't i'm not a publisher so i'm following their lead yeah i don't yeah. i'm not that guy i'm not marcus samuelson or whatever so i'm so, also following their lead yeah um but to their credit, I did push the envelope with some stuff and they didn't give me any pushback. You know, the yeah. biggest pushback was probably the title. And finally, they were just like, yeah, man, just. What sure. was your, did you have a different title you wanted? Well, the first one, I, yeah, I had one and they said no. Uh, it was, uh, who gonna do these dishes? Who gonna do these dishes? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, I mean. I love that title. Uh, Why it, 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 it tested well with my friends. Oh, because it makes sense and it's, and it's uh, you know, inside jokes, humorous. And yeah, and it's yeah. always a thing in my home. Like, you Who's know. Who's going to do the dishes if I make all this? Exactly. Prior to this endeavor, you know, it was pretty much my rule that, okay, if I cook, I ain't doing these fucking dishes. You Absolutely. know what I mean? I'm not, I just cooked, yeah. you know. It's not cook and clean. It's cook yeah. or clean. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but you know, oh, once again, you know, my girl, she supports me through all this. We got a small child, and you know, I had to take a step back and look like, okay, I just created some craziness here. <laughs> I really can't expect her to just slay through this every time. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. So it was just a thing. Like, yeah, I mean, I made all this. So who gonna do these dishes? You know, that was a thing. But they were like. Well, we don't know if that people would know what it's about. We don't like, know who's going to do the dishes, Scotty. <laughs> we, we're not sure. <laughs> uh, you know, and you know, you know, my publisher—they're out of Boston, Massachusetts, so I don't know if they're quite as familiar with the vernacular with some of this stuff. Um, so that didn't make it. But some, no, a lot of the, lot of the pictures are not what they asked for in terms of. The framing, you know, so they let me get away with that. So that that's interesting I that they go that in depth with. It. I mean, I knew they got into it, but I hadn't heard about that. Like it's the a form. It's their aspect. formula. Yeah. You know, all their books are, you know, are a certain way. So exactly. They're soft yeah. cover. They're 60 recipes, 60 photos. And that's what they've, you know, figured out. This is our formula. We can make money with it. So I, I applaud them for it. I don't have a problem with it. You know. It's first one, right? So exactly. Like, exactly. Let's exactly. Get this one under your belt. So uh, overall, like, how how happy are you with 
the final product and everything? Yeah, um, so I was, I was pretty, I was a little concerned initially because um, I've had, I had a passion for writing early on in life and I kind of didn't pursue that. And so this is gonna be my first foray into writing. And so um, it's been well received in that aspect. People really enjoy the stories. And so that's been, um, it's been pleasant, pleasant to hear that, you know. So you were trying to find, I mean, sort of bringing a familiar idea of a cookbook, but giving it a twist. In yeah. a sense, so almost the way you cook. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of the way I went into this whole endeavor. You know, yeah, I mean, I thought I like that. when I when I when I started this whole thing, I was kind of like late to the game. I feel like sure. And so um, I wanted to separate myself, and to do that, I felt like I had to be myself as much as possible. Yeah, you know, and if either you like that or you don't, and you take it from there. And so. Um, I felt that way with the cookbook. Like, I mean, it's so many cookbooks on the shelf. All I can do is just give you me. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But that's what I got, you know, so. Only you can do you. Exactly. Exactly. That is a tough thing when you're learning to cook, like trying to find your way, your voice, you know, your flavor, your palate. Like, what are you good at? What do people expect, you know, when they eat your food? You know that sort of thing um it's you know it could be good to know a lot of different styles of food and technique but it's one of those sayings of you know a little about a lot instead of a lot about a little right yeah and that was one thing that i that i that i you know when i first started getting into social media with the food and stuff i was like i, I can take two paths with this one is open up a cookbook a professional cookbook and just replicate stuff or I can try to make my own. And so I chose the latter because I was like, that's, that's, that's the only thing that's gonna get me where I wanna be, is, is doing my own thing, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I'm gonna start out with some stock here, which is just uh, shrimp shells, celery, Carrot, onion, garlic, um, bay leaf, and a little bit of Creole seasoning. For everyone watching this that can't smell it, it smells delicious. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to move this back. That's here. the only thing that people, you know, they can't get across on, right. uh, on cooking. Not yet. Not yet. I've heard they got right, some, yet. something going on in Japan or something. I don't know. But, um,. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. It was, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but it's something like that, like some, some kind of smell-o-vision. But uh, stock is like one of my favorite things to make because, you know, if you saw it was, I don't, you know, you're not peeling the onions or the garlic or anything. You're yeah. just dumping all that in there and it's going to create all this great flavor from what could be considered scraps, basically, so. No, I agree. Um, making use of everything. Yeah. That's good. You're a proponent of that. Some cooks don't worry about it, you know, they just, which no. is fine. Sometimes you just don't learn about it. Sort of one of the main things you learn at the beginning. Well, and that's, you know, I tell people on social media, my followers and stuff, I was like, you know, you know part of the reason I like that too is um, you, you, you're able to control flavors when you create stuff from scratch. Um, and so stock is one of those easy things to, to, to do because, you know, sometimes, you know, you, it, it's easy to use pre-made stuff and then when you, the store doesn't have it or they discontinue it, then you're kind of stuck. So I've good, been in that situation where I've got this banging recipe that everybody loves and all of a sudden I go to the store and I'm like, oh, they don't have that one seasoning. Now nah, I'm <laughs> stuck. So, yeah. uh, you know, just when I can, I like to make it from scratch. No, that's a good, uh, that's actually a great point. I know they've got this one new bouillon out that's supposed to be so amazing because it's got so much flavor. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want it to taste like your, sh can I cut? Oh yeah, 
I don't taste like your shit. I want to taste like my shit. You know, every time I make it, it's going to taste like this. Yeah, yeah. Because it's going to be overpowering. And I want, I want to taste like what I'm putting into it. Absolutely. So. That, that's the thing. A lot of things that people add to their food is literally the thing that gives it the main flavor. Absolutely. And they're, that's the one thing they'll skimp on, which yeah. is kind of... I mean, this, this is a prime example. The stock is going to be the base flavor for this. You know what I mean? So I want to start with that in a good light. All right, so next we've got the polenta, which is uh, just cheddar cheese, uh, beef stock, uh, salt, and butter. Takes a couple, you know, a couple hours, but I just throw it in the fridge overnight. It's fine. And what we're going to do is just slice it up into some cakes, if you will. Oh yeah, look at that. Beautiful. What a great idea to do that. I've had this dish served so many different ways. But never I've never seen it like this. I love it. I'm I'm very big on texture and mouthfeel. Like so that that's one thing when I'm when I'm chopping up veggies, I'm very almost anal about it because in the alt in the end you're gonna you're going to feel that. You're going to recognize that. And so it's a way to put a different texture to it because you're normally used to, sure. you know, more of, a, more of a creamy kind of a dish. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great Sunday brunch dish Abs that's yeah. good. Yeah. Honestly, any time of the week. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those dishes like all the restaurants ever worked out like if you work brunch that's what you wanted <laughs> if it was good right, right. If, if the place you worked had it it was good right oh yeah look at that so just throw some butter in there and let those go wow for a little bit Yeah, that looks amazing. All right. Chris, 4K. Wow, just see like everything. <laughs> and we're gonna start with our base for the sauce. My knife, my knives are really dull. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I, I just had mine shipped off. Th those red things on the side. If those are hot, those red things on the ah. side are to grab if you need to. Gotcha. What am I doing here? Okay. Um, yeah, I know that's one of the most dangerous things to have in a kitchen is a dull knife, like, without a doubt. I've just, like any, like any chef, just gets lost, right, sometimes. Yeah, that's one thing that I do wish I was more... I just use them so much, right? Adamant like, about... I'm, I use it so, I use my knife so much, it's hard to keep up with the sharpening. I mean, that's always been yeah. uh, the case for me, for as long as I can remember. We used to have a couple of restaurants I worked. We had a guy that would, you know, come in once a month uh -huh. and do it for everybody, sharpen everyone's knives. Yeah, I mean that's that's where I need to be. Where I'm like, I'm just there, you know, and you're doing it once a week, sitting down and taking care of your knives. I mean, it really is like important. Excuse my technique here. Oh, please. This is where I would time lapse in my videos because my <laughs> knife technique is not. Fantastic. It's not about technique for me. It's all about flavor, right? Like, there's something to that. Nobody wants to see me cut an onion either. So trust me, you're doing great. There is something to that. Uh, I mean, technique's cool, right? Uh, absolutely. And necessary at times. And necessary for sure. There's certain things you can't get away from. Yeah. Well, I've been telling this story recently. I went to a uh, supper club of sorts. And so they begin the evening, you know, when the chef comes out and he says, you know, everybody in the back has a culinary degree. They're in there making masterpieces. I think it was like seven different chefs back there working. And uh, everything that came out that evening was mediocre at best. Yeah. The dessert, people couldn't even finish because it was so bad. 
Oh, no. Yeah, it was, which is like, how does this happen with all these culinary degrees in the back? So, for one, I hesitate to call myself a chef. I really don't because I haven't been to culinary school, and I do respect the profession. I, I respect that. And there are techniques that I wish I knew better and will probably try to learn later on down the line. Um, but it's just like anything else. I mean, they're bad plumbers, they're bad doctors, they're bad lawyers. I mean, just because you've been to school for it doesn't mean you're good at it, you know? That's exactly right. You know, and especially with cooking, which is a lot of feel involved, you know? I mean, I could sit in the other room and know if bacon is burning or not, just by, from the sizzle, just from the sound, from the smell, from what it looks like. And so, you know, when people ask me about, you know, cooking and having not going to culinary school, I'd say I'm not going to dissuade you from going because it definitely has value, but do not think that because someone else has that they automatically have better food than you. Hey Amen. I couldn't agree more, man. I, I didn't go to culinary school either. I just learned in kitchens and yeah. when I opened my own food truck in Austin, boy, trial by fire. Yeah. For, for the first couple of years. You know? Oh boy, I'm 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 getting ready to open up one myself, man. You don't scare me away now. No, no, it's <laughs> one of the best experiences in my life, man. I had it for five years down there in Austin. Okay. On Rainy Street. Oh wow. Okay. South Lamar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did a lot of catering. Yeah. Austin's a great place for it. That's I moved down there just to open the truck. Oh wow. Okay. Because it's fr friendly. The city's friendly to, right. to it. So. Right. Because the biggest thing when you open a truck or a trailer is, well, now what? Now where do I go? Now, yeah. now where do I set up? Yeah, yeah. And then, you go, oh, well, people are just going to have me everywhere. No, nope, that's not how it works. Yeah. That's, that was the hardest hustle for the first 18 months was just getting in front of people to mm. get them to want, have me come out. Then once you're in the circle, you're good. Right. You stay in the circle. You start getting those emails and, and it's, you know, they keep adding up. Gotcha. And all those events you go to the next year, you're back again, right? So now you got a schedule, you got something to build off of. But yeah, it's really tough at the beginning of like where to park, what to do. Gotcha. But I definitely uh, recommend it. I encourage it. What would your tr what would your truck be like this? Like this same style? Or you have a specific concept. So right now, it's probably going to be a grilled cheese concept. Oh yeah. And then I'll just have funky specials on the weekends, just yeah. whatever. You know what I mean? What it's like won't be grilled cheese specific, but everybody's telling me, you know, don't make it too crazy. Only have a couple of menu items. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm gonna follow that lead. It, and for I've a food some... truck, you have to. It's, yeah. It's just you, you, dude. You just won't have the space. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what it's gonna be. Yeah. Right. So. Right. I've there's a there's a if you want a reference for a good grilled cheese uh -huh. truck in Austin, there's one called well, there's two. One's called Burrow. Okay. Uh, kitchen. They're strictly like grilled cheese, using all kinds of fancy cheeses and stuff. It's mm -hmm. nice. It's really it's really good. And then there's another one called Oh man. Hope. I think it's just called Hope. Okay. And that's more traditional. Okay grilled cheeses but they're both been in austin for years and they have a great following mm. and they both just make amazing simple food and it's delicious yeah the really popular grilled cheese place that that's the plan i mean it's, it's, it's gonna be funky okay. um one of my favorites that will be on the menu is uh gouda apple mint truffle butter oh my god that sounds great yeah yeah it's <laughs> it's got a you know different flavors going on there and yeah the mint kind of just pops everything off um yeah i like that idea a lot i love a good grilled cheese man i love sandwiches yeah 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 so that'll be the base for everything and then like i said once i've got that then i'll i'll just get funky with it with weekly specials and stuff you know, I'm curious about the cookbook, like when you have these 60 recipes, like had you made all 60 of those? Oh, hell no. So you, so a lot of them you just came up with on paper first. Yeah, okay. I probably had 30, 20, 25 maybe. Oh, wow. Okay. 
because I eat yeah. soul food. I mean, who has that many recipes, right? And who has them written down? Well, I mean, but soul food is very specific. Yeah. I don't specialize in soul food. I eat soul food. I grew up uh, eating soul food, and I cook soul food. But, but, I mean, I cook everything in terms of, you know, I cook Italian, you know, Asian. You know, I was on a fish sauce kick when I, once I discovered that for, like, a year. So, oh, I just, I'm all over the place. Every, everybody goes through that. Yeah, all right? And I was like, wait, this is what? Trust me. Whoa. Absolutely. I, I did the same thing, man. Whoa. Because everybody, yeah. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Where's this been my whole life? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's funny. So, um, so yeah, I just didn't have 60 soul food recipes ready to go. Um, plus the desserts. I'm not a baker, so that had to uh, be a research effort. So it was cool, man. Like, you know, surprisingly, one thing that really, that I really enjoyed and I'm really looking forward to in my next book was the research. Um, I didn't have the resources to be like boots on the ground with some of this stuff. Sure. You know what I mean? and you go try go this, try that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I fly get it. out to wherever it's you sure. know originates and, and do that. Sure. Whoa. Yes, that's what we want. Stock's we want going. We want action. Stock's going. <laughs> the stock is going. <laughs> uh, but it's the research, man. Yeah. I, I loved it. You know. I loved it. Yeah, absolutely. That that is the best part. Just eating food. Yeah. Yep. Hope you're enjoying this episode with Chef Scotty Scott. Amazing, right? Cooking in the studio. I love that we're doing this. Anyway, quickly want to tell you about our social media. Please check us out on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. If you're on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. That would help us out a lot. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. And if you're on social media, please... Let us know uh, what you want to see on there. Leave some comments, leave some likes. We put polls, all those sort of kind of things behind the scenes. Just extra stuff about the podcast. You wouldn't know unless, you know, you go to that. Not going to get it just on the show. So anyway, let's get back to the show. I really hope you're enjoying this sort of live cooking. If you're just listening to it, uh, let us know how that is. If that's something you want to see more of, please, um, because we'll do it. If you're watching, I'm sure it's absolutely wonderful, right? My goodness, this food. Uh, let's get back to the show, guys. Scotty Scott, hope you're enjoying it. All right, so we got that going. Got some green onion here. What's your favorite dish out of the book? I mean, I, I know we're cooking this one, but is this your favorite one? This or? is one of my favorites. Yeah. Just because of, um, it's what I do. Yeah, it's you know when I when I do pop ups, um, what I want to hear from people is uh, one is delicious, and two I've never had this before. Those that's my goal when I'm doing a yeah. pop up is to hear those two words, and so um, this one I like um, gullo red rice. It's one of my favorites just because it's got so many levels to it in terms of uh you know when i wrote this book and i was researching it became a bit of a uh a reawakening of my own family history so you know when i really started cooking as an adult i was living in houston so it's heavily influenced with okay uh, uh, gulf coast you know sure gumbo yeah po' boys and I love that. And then researching the book, you know, there were there were dishes that I had eaten growing up that my mother, who's from Savannah, Georgia, would make growing up. And, oh wow! You know, just kind of uh, thinking about it, like, man, yeah, that's you know that um, that coastal region, low country, has its own, yeah. you know, unique. Uh, dishes and flavors, and so absolutely uh, the gullet red rice is something I remember just eating growing up and loved, and was yeah. just had to put it in the book. You know, I, you know that's that's an interesting point you bring up too, because I don't think people understand that that part of Texas has 
that influence. They think it's right. only in New Orleans, right? Right in Louisiana, right. but that's right. not true at all. In fact, the very first Mardi Gras was in Galveston, Texas. I could believe that. I you know, that. and it yeah. went to New Orleans. Yeah. You know, it started there in Galveston, and if you've been to Galveston. You're like, oh, this does feel like, right. you know, that kind of town, right. like completely. No, I've got some friends that are from Southeast Texas. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Beaumont. Yeah. Yeah. And they've made some of the best crawfish boys I've ever had. I, I believe that a hundred percent. Absolutely. And it's like you said, people don't necessarily think about that with Texas, but this is so big, you yeah, know, but exactly. that's it's there, yep. you know? On that side of Texas, exactly. Yeah, on that side, you're gonna get it. You know, I tell people to just for like scale and scope, uh, I was working a job in El Paso. So I would drive from Houston to El Paso, it was like 10 and a half hours. And so from Houston, 10 hours west, Wow. you're still in Texas. Yeah. 10 hours east, you go through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, <laughs> and you're in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you've gone through four states, and you're in a whole, so it's, it's just to put it in scope for people that they don't really realize it. But yeah, um, that part of the, of the state is definitely very big into, into the Gulf Coast culture and food. All right, so I'm going to transfer these. Yeah, the color looks great on the stove. And that's just what I'm looking for, just to get a little crispiness a little bit of brown on there yeah looks great and the good thing about those grits when you make them man once you get them warm they they hold that heat they're gonna they're gonna be warm for the next 30 minutes so we're fine all right so next up we're gonna start sauce with a little olive oil That's getting warm. I'll get my oh, time Oh, smells ready. so good in here. Like, it's unbelievable. That's one of my favorite parts about cooking, too. Just the smells while you're yeah. cooking. Yeah. Just the smells. I could live on that alone. Yeah. I mean, I know you, they say you eat with your eyes, and that is true, partially, right? But, man, if you don't get smells right, <laughs> it's just like, there's nothing you can do to save the dish. Well, I mean, that's what I love about cooking. I mean, you know, the culinary arts is the one true art form that involves all the senses. Yeah. I mean, you see it, it's yeah. beautiful, you know. You smell it before it even gets to your plate. Yeah. You know, you hear it sizzling in the background. That's a good point. And then you, you feel it when it's in your mouth. I mean, this, is, this, is, this dish is a prime example of mouthfeel and how the same flavor is prepared differently will affect you differently and affect your brain differently and how do you perceive it. And that's what I love about it. You know? Absolutely. And one of the only art forms you like ingest. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can't, you, <laughs> you can't eat, eat that beautiful painting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You yeah. can't. I mean, it's actually. You can try. It's, yeah, you can you try. try. I'm, I mean, I'm sure some have. You I'm know, sure see, yeah. Some weird <laughs> Banksy stuff going on or something like that, you know. But yeah, exactly. It's one of the, that you can ingest. You can actually, you know, it's actually doing your body a service here. Yeah, you know? exactly. And art that's good for you. Yeah. Healthy. You know, this is a dish that um, is a good example of the texture. Another one I had that uh, I just had for um, uh, pre-orders. So if you pre-order the book, I gave you four bonus recipes. Oh, nice. So one was a smoked duck gumbo, oh, which wow. blew me away. Um, I'm a big gumbo guy. Wow. And I think I, I like seafood gumbo. I think I like it better than my, my seafood gumbo. So <laughs> it just started off as I, I smoked a duck. Yeah, I went to this grocery store. I'm not gonna name them, name drop them, but I was like, man, y'all got duck? No, say less. So I got a duck and I smoked it. Um, what's with apples? I'm not sure. Anyways, I smoked the duck and I made a duck bow. That's what I was gonna make with it. Yeah, made those were delicious. I still got this whole duck left. I made duck tacos. Oh wow. And so after that, still got like half a duck left. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So Keep running out of duck. Yeah. Froze it. Um, came back to it about a month later. Um, you know, stripped it down. Um, made the stock out of the bones, which is, you know, it's, it was incredible. Just the smokiness within the the carcass made that such a deep flavor. And so made duck gumbo and it's smoked duck gumbo. It was, it was incredible. Oh my gosh, sounds um, delicious. So smoked duck gumbo. 
um, um, buttermilk corn, cheddar corn bread, um, shrimp etouffee, duck fat shrimp etouffee with crispy onion strings. This was another texture thing. Yeah. So, and, you know, with my recipes, a lot of them, they evolve over time. You know, it started off as etouffee. It's good. How do I make it mine? Okay. Exactly. Duck fat adds a little bit of earthiness to it. Sure. Under, under, undertow to it. That's, that's delicious. Okay. And then it was uh, Thanksgiving time. I was like, man, should I make some uh, green bean casserole? I love those little funky egg, you know, onion strings on top. And I was like, you know what? I don't really like green bean casserole. I just like the onion strings thing. <laughs> so why not throw them on the etouffee? Absolutely. And so you know, I give them a little bit of a dusting of cayenne at the end. And so it just, you take etouffee and all of a sudden you got this crispy, sweet kind of topping to it that changes the whole complexity of the dish. Um, and then the last one was... Um, uh, candy sweet potato gnocchi. Oh, wow. So, same preferences, uh, same uh, beginning as sweet potato, uh, candy sweet potatoes. Um, just roast them, mash them up in the gnocchi, toss them in some candy sauce. Awesome flavor with a nice little different chewy texture to it. So just, just trying to make, you know, dishes that you're used to uh, a little bit different, a little fun. I mean, that's what it's really about. Do you like try the, the, does your wife get to try all of these initially? Is that, oh, is yeah, that the deal? Yeah. She's always a part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's my, you know, it was, it was difficult, man, because I was doing the book during, you know, during COVID, during lockdown. And that's normally my, normally my thing is like, okay, anybody, somebody, sometimes I'm, comes over like, okay, thanks for coming, but try this weird dish I just made up last <laughs> night. You know, <laughs> if I go over a friend's love house, like, hey, how's y'all going? I got some uh, chocolate chip cookies with potato chips on top of them. Let me know what you think. Yeah. And there was none of that. So she was my only real, you know, taste, taste tester. tester. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so I, I bless her for that. But afterwards, she's like, babe, please, no more, no more soul food. You know, because, you know, when we met, uh, she was a kale, a kale junkie. You know, yeah. she'd meet like once or twice a week. Oh, wow. And ate very clean and healthy. She didn't know she was getting herself into a soul food book. So <laughs> I was like, that's... I understand. Soul food's but, about meat and flavor. And yeah, it's fat, you know, right? Fat you know, is fried flavor. catfish. Yeah, you know, she's like, yeah. please, no more. No more. Please. I'm like, okay, but <laughs> thank you for thank you for your patience. That's funny. That's why it's good to, you know, try all the different styles of food that you were talking about earlier. Asian, French, right? Any Spanish, Mexican. Oh, I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's this thing in cooking like I mean, I get where it comes from, but it's a little misleading. Like this thing came out at the beginning of COVID. I remember about a chef getting accused of cultural appropriation for yeah. cooking a certain style of food. And I was like, yeah, wait a second. I said, man, when it comes to cooking, like now you're telling that t that guy from Thailand, he can only cook Thai food. That, uh, that's, do you have a colander? Right yes, right here. This, this uh, middle shelf has a bunch. Right here? In bowls, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. A bit. Um, a bunch of yeah, I know it was, uh, I know. It's like in Houston or something? So there was one know. in Portland. Maybe that was it. I mean, there's been a few. Where, yeah, I'm sure it has. You yeah, know. Um, where, um, but this was some theft. I'm going to say, this was, let me, let me explain my, my rationale on this. Sure. You know, I think, you know, if you're coming from a place of sincerity and genuineness and you're trying to, explore other cultures and ex expose people to other cultures. Um, I mean, yeah, what are you just going to be relegated to whatever you grew up eating in your own home? I, and I could never cook Italian food if that was exactly. the case. I mean, we didn't, exactly. my mom didn't make lasagna, you know. Exactly, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but the, 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 there was a, I think it was a food truck in Portland. They had these amazing tacos. They'd gone to Mexico and learned how to make the tortilla, learned how to make the tacos and like stolen a recipe. And then came back. Ah, uh, okay. And like, okay, that's yeah. different. 
That's yeah, bullshit. That's not cultural appropriation. That, that's recipe stealing. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's bullshit. That is but bullshit. Yeah. But I as agree. far as cultural appropriation, I don't, you know, I, I don't know where to go with that in terms of you, you can't just land lock, lock lock people into whatever they grew up eating. That doesn't make any sense. Absolutely, you know? it wouldn't be fa- like my mom's from Mexico, so I grew okay. up in my house. We grew up eating Mexican food because my mom cooked, so okay. she, that's what we ate all the time. And but then when I got my food truck, I did Spanish food because I lived in uh, Spain for many years and my wife's from Spain. Okay. So I was like, okay, well, but I want to bring my Mexican heritage, right? What I grew up on, right. my mom's sort of recipes and stuff I ate in Mexico. And just growing up in Texas, some of that too, you know? Right. Bring it all together. But right. it's like, um, oh, but, but I want to add a little touch of this or a little touch of that. We should be allowed to do that, in my opinion. Like you said, if you're respecting it, yeah. and it literally comes from a place of love, right? And that's usually what it is. A that's, chef is cooking it because he loves it. Ninety percent of the time, right? That's what it's it like is. I love these flavors. Right. I love this shit. That, right. Like the fish sauce thing, right? We exactly. all go through an Asian, exactly. Uh, you know, temper. You know, um, temporada. I don't know how to say that. In Awakening. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Exactly, and yeah. you, you know what it is? You just learn yeah. from these other things, and then you bring it all together for your own cooking. Exactly. You know, and I think that's the way it should be. Um, again, I think uh, anybody should just cook whatever they want if they're respecting the food. Right. Period. Right. You know? Right. And that goes with saying, like, trying to serve, not help, not I don't want to say healthy, that, that's a misleading word, but, you know, just remember you're giving food to somebody to put in their body. Exactly. And, and respect that. Exactly. And be concerned with, you know, what you're giving them to eat. You know, you're concerned with the ingredients. You've prepped it right. You've stored it right. You've, you know, yeah. all those little, little steps. Yeah. Yeah, that was one thing that I, I really, you know, uh, learned a lot about in researching the book was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's and it's, it's, I'm going to say this. I don't know if we've got to figure it out yet. There's a push with heirloom grains and yeah. getting back to real food. Sure. Because some of the recipes I was researching, they're like, well, yeah, it doesn't taste like this anymore because we, we can't even find the grain that they used to use. Correct. You know, like one of the recipes is Hoppin' John. And so a lot of recipes called for black eyed peas. And they're like, well, no, this wasn't made with black eyed peas. And it was made I with see. these certain kind of peas that you really can't find anymore. So yeah. that's why it doesn't taste the same, you sure. know. Sure. And so good, I enjoy the push towards, you know, reviving those natural grains. However, you know, a bag of beans shouldn't cost you nine dollars or whatever it is right now. Absolutely. You know, we've got to we've got to find a medium in terms of getting that real food and real ingredients, but not making it where, you know, it's exorbitantly priced. Um, yeah. You know, hopefully some of that urban farming will help with that. I know that's pretty big in my hometown of Detroit in terms of they're trying to find um, uses for the you're, space. You're right. I land. have seen that in the front yards of house. I've seen them use that <clears throat> up there. Yeah. Well, you know, in Detroit, um, you know, the population loss is, you know, I think when I was there it was like a million. And my, now it's like 600,000 or 500,000. Oh, wow. wow. And so you've got these large swaths of neighborhoods where just abandoning abandoned buildings yeah. and lands. So they're totally. trying to figure out what to do with it and they're yeah. thinking like that might be a good avenue to try to re- revitalize the city and, and make good use of the land. So I like that idea for sure. Absolutely. All right. So got our bell so pepper colorful. and onion. Add some salt. Rocket, you getting hungry, buddy? You smell all that. Pepper. <laughs> see here. If you're thirsty, man, please, there's anything you want in the fridge to drink. Okay, appreciate that. I don't drink beer, but there's beers in there. Feel free to drink them, because. All right. They're literally for my guests. You may have to take you up on that. Cause oh, drink them all. I, I don't drink. Drank is my middle name. Yeah, that's right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, very, I'm very rare occasions I'll, I drink. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a smoker. Oh, well, that's a whole other story. <laughs> I mean, I lived in Austin for seven years. So it's like. <laughs> all right. Got our 
shrimp here and I got my oh, that's so good. blackening spice. It's also in the book. Um, and I felt I had to, you know, there's, there's a section on there because, you know, when I was asking my publishers, I was like, look, you know, this recipe is getting complex in terms of everything that's involved with it. Like, you know, I want them to use this stock. I want them to use this spice. I don't want them to go out and just buy it. And so they were like, well, let's just do sure. a chapter devoted to that. And I was like, okay, perfect. Because it's, it's, oh, that's cool. It's, it's really, it's cool you even thought about that, honestly, at the heart of, you know, I, I talk about that. I've got several fried dishes in there and none of them have the same mixture because I mean, they're all, they all have different uh, profiles. I mean, yeah. I, you know, you don't want your, you know, your fried catfish shouldn't taste the same as your fried okra. Yeah. I mean, there's two different, totally different things. And so I, I uh, implore people to just don't always reach for the seasoning salt because everything's going to taste the same. You know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, you can just throw four I different little. I recommend getting rid of seasoning salt. Say, say what? I said, I recommend getting rid of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. I mean, because it's, it's pretty simple to make stuff at home, one. Yeah, exactly. Two, you can always control it. You know, that's, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, I mean I'm yeah. just, maybe it's a control freak, but, um, you know, you don't want everything to taste the same. So, again, that's all, that's your whole flavor. So, when you put that in there, that's what you're, that's all you're going to taste. Yes. Is that stuff. And it's exactly. designed for that. Exactly. I exactly. Get it. I get it. Yeah. 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 I get it. And that's what the ma most people want. But I'm like, there are sure. certain things that you can do that are fairly simple that you can kind of make yourself unique and separate yourself and make yourself a good cook. Absolutely. One of that is making your own spices yeah. um, and just adding stock. You know, a lot of times when it calls for water, stock just does wonders. 100%. Even if it's just veggie stock. It doesn't yes, have to be, yes. you know, shrimp or in this case, or chicken or whatever. Veggie stock has so much flavor. Absolutely. You know, one of my favorite dishes in the book is because it's simple and it can be made a thousand different ways. It's um, stewed okra and tomatoes. And so Ooh. Um, in the book, I use duck fat. Um, and I use chicken stock, yeah. but it could be easily just made with veggies, Ve vegetable stock and rice is the whole meal, you know. All right. Just going to interrupt this episode very quickly to tell you about a segment we call Reheat. It's where we look back at a past episode and recommend it again. So in honor of Chef Scotty Scott, we're going to recommend two episodes we've done with Chef Michael Silverstein. He was a contestant on MasterChef. He's released two cookbooks. He's a keto chef. They're absolutely wonderful interviews and even better cookbooks. So we'll put links in the description to that. Please check them out. And I hope you enjoy them. Let's get back to this episode with Chef Scotty Scott. Please also, if you're listening to this, let us know if this is something you like. If this is listening to the cooking and all that, if that's something we should keep doing. We're, we want to keep doing more cooking in the studio, so I think we're going to do it regardless. But anyway. Let us know what we could do to improve it or improve the sounds for you if you're just listening. So anyway, let's get back to the episode with Chef Scotty Scott. Ah, I can already smell the shrimp, y'all. So. I'm not gonna need all of that. Look how easy that is, right? The yep. stock. Look at that. Yep. Especially a shrimp, a seafood stock. Because you, you know, were going to throw, you throw all those shells away anyway, and it has so much flavor. So in much it. flavor. Yeah. I mean, seafood, it only takes like five minutes, really. You don't even yeah, need yeah, to do absolutely. it that long. You're 100% right. So we're going to add seafood stock in there. This is directly from the stock you've been cooking the whole time while we're here and from the shrimp. Uh, shells that you made, yeah. right? So, yeah. yeah. We're going to. I'm curious, people listening to this, how what it'll be like. Because I've listened to some cooking ones. Yeah. I like them actually, yeah. but they make, they make me so hungry. I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, and that's the goal, right? Like yeah. that's what you know they've done a good job. Exactly. All right, we're gonna let that simmer for a little bit over there while we blacken our shrimp. 
this is a little bit of a little spin on it too is the blackening because a lot of times you just add the shrimp to the stock and you're done so we get a nice little char on it just to round out the flavor so let that get hot and a little bit of oil Voila. that's actually the first time i've used that oh this pan yeah no the, oh, this, oh this little burner yeah the burner yeah I bought it just for this reason to do stuff, and I never used it. I have a, um, the one with the canisters. What do you call it? The camping ones, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I use those a lot. Yeah. 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 Like the, that's not propane, but a little butane. Butane. Yeah. So, yeah. Those are very handy. Yes. Which it, I was going to pull that out too, but I figured, well, this looks cleaner. Would this look nicer? Although fire, right? Like cooking on fire, there's nothing like it. Man, it's nothing like it. You know, it's a big difference. It's a big difference. Uh, right now, I'm, I, use, I have gas in my house. I yeah. just saw something where they're, I think in New York, they're like outlawing new gas rangers or something. Really? Yeah, it's... it's Austin yeah. is all gas. I was so surprised. Really? Oh, yeah. Everyone's got gas. I had gas the whole time I lived there. I loved it. And of course, as soon as I moved back to Dallas... <laughs> Like, uh, it's supposed to be, you know, environmentally unfriendly, which, yeah. you know, I guess they say yeah. so. But. It's like, listen, wait a second. We discovered fire and that's how we got to where we are. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, exactly. how are we going to say it's environmentally unfriendly? Exactly. The, the thing that like propelled us <laughs> into the future. Like. <laughs> Controlling fire? That's hilarious. <laughs> if they if our ancestors could see us now. <laughs> outlawing fire like <laughs> but Yeah, I I love them with fire. Just right, the yeah. control factor, it gets hot so fast. Are you able to grill at home, you know? Do you do that kind yeah. of stuff? Yeah. Oh absolutely. Yeah, I'm I've got I've got one barbecue dish in there. I just I, I had to. My father was a big griller. Oh really? So, yeah. And he, he he taught me how to grill and the importance of smoke yeah. and imparting flavor. Sure. And so I've got a uh, pecan smoked chicken oh, with wow. Alabama white barbecue sauce. And then that uh, also makes its way into the remix chapter, which is uh, avocado toast with um, pecan smoked chicken and Alabama white barbecue sauce. And that's probably going to make it into the grilled cheese truck because every time i serve it at events people like go crazy over it <laughs> oh wow it's it, it's it's wild because it's one of those things where i always try to make new recipes with the leftovers it's my big thing you know, sure when I first started doing this i was a single guy so you know you got to be unique and creative with what your leftovers are and absolutely kind of throw away so i'm gonna make some avocado toast for this and it was like whoa the flavor this ain't bad yeah it hit so I think this should be good to go. Oh yeah, you can hear it on your mic too, it's perfect. <laughs> nice. Honestly, these mics that we have, they're, huh. I spent $1,000 to get just these two mics. Wow, really? But they're ridiculously amazing. Like, the audio quality is beyond pale. It, like, it's just so good. Nice. That's what it takes. Picks up everything you want it to and mm -hmm. not anything you don't want to. Uh. It, like, I don't know how it does it. Like, honestly, <laughs> I, I don't know how it does it. I, I really don't. Well, that's where they're a thousand bucks. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for it. it. You know, when it comes to videos, like, you'll forgive a lot when you watch a video, but uh -huh. one thing you won't forgive is bad audio. Right. Yeah. You that's will true. turn off a video. But visually, you'll get away with a, a out of focus camera, this, that, the other. You know, it's uh -huh. artistic or something, but you don't get artistic with the audio being bad or right. whatever, you know, like grungy or whatever. Right. Like, it's got to be good. Those bad oh, boys smell so in there. Good. Yeah, so shrimp, uh, right? Like that always just flash, you know, cooking, yeah. right? So quick. Pretty much as, as fast as I can cook it. You know yeah. what I mean? So otherwise, it's going to get tough. Yeah. A little bit chewy. Um, so, yeah, it's just a quick couple minutes each side, and you should be good to go. 
What are you, is there anything in particular that you are looking at on the fish to let you know that it's done? Like color, uh, like the translucence goes away? Yeah, I don't exactly. know, what are Once you? Once it becomes a bit opaque, yeah. you normally turn it and then the other side should be good to go as well. Hopefully yeah. you're getting a little char in, in the process, just yeah. to know how hot the, the heat is. But yeah. Um, yeah, you wanna make sure that it gets to be opaque and then you're good to go. With these, because we're also actually adding them to the dish, we can take them off a little early because they're going to cook a little bit in the sauce too. I gotcha. So par cook a little. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Exactly. Yeah, it smells delicious. The color is yeah. amazing. Yeah. That blackening spice, which I put on chicken, I put on salmon. Oh just, it's a great little rub. Um, you know, it's another little hack that I tell people. You know, one, one reason I like making my spices, man, if you go to the bulk spice section, even at the, you know, the fancy store in here in town, and you do it yourself, man, you probably save like 75%. Oh, absolutely. You're right. You know 100%. I mean? like, 100%. You're I mean, absolutely right. For what, this little bottle right here costs five bucks. If, yeah. you, if you walk three hours down and yeah. do it yourself, it's like 50 cents. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. seriously. You're 100% right. Yes. So I tell folks, you know, go just go one weekend, you know, get, get your bulk spices together, mix up a couple spices, put them in a drawer. I mean, you're going to save a lot of money, Absolutely. a lot of money. That's a great point. All right. He's pretty much done. Yeah, that looks so good. It smells. It's... Start by laying down our polenta. Rocket, fuera de la cocina tú. Eh, te veo. Fuera, anda. Rocket, anda, fuera, anda. Rocket's from Spain, about. <laughs> he, 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 uh... Move back here with us. All right. Let's see. All right, let's do this this way. Yeah, if you want, you can set it on that. No. Okay. And so we just got a little half and half we're going to add to the sauce. down and then drizzle our sauce
That is it. Wow. Fried shrimp and grits. Bam. So we've got the, uh, I'm gonna get a little close up on it. Just kind of walk us through. So I did do something uh, a little controversial here. <laughs> it's a big thing on the internet. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, what's the, what, what is it? The, it's the tails. Do you keep the tails on or off? Oh, that's a good question. It's a I, big uh, thing. I like them on. I like them on. Mm. People say if you're, if you're not going to use your fingers. Oh my God. Bro, that is so good. Thank you. That's absolutely delicious. I like the tail because you can grab it and eat it. Exactly. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. That's delicious. Yeah. Wow. Ah! Too hot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's good. I'm not gonna... Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I need a whole, a whole plate of that. <laughs> um, and I'm going back. Here. <laughs> see, that's what I like to see. No, it's, it's delicious, really. It's <laughs> really good. Thank you. Thank you. Holy cow. Really, that, the polenta having that crunch, too. Like, just enough. Like just that's enough. Just, just enough. Just enough. Oh, that's so good, dude. Just, that to, just sauce to add is... another little dimension to it. And you saw the sauce is basically all stock. You know, it's, it's the stock yeah. is the star of everything. You yeah. Know, and that's what it starts with, is the stock. Yeah. So, so, so good. Were there any other variations of this or was this the original dish? That was pretty much the original dish. The only thing that I changed around was the polenta. Um, I've got a um, short rib um, yeah. griot with polenta yeah. and I fried that and I was like, no, nah, I like the shrimp with the fried. So mm -hmm. that's, this was pretty much the first incarnation of of this dish and wow. I was like wow I that's like kind it. of impressive right Cause yeah, yeah normally I do most of them get tinkered with everybody and that's everybody yeah like, yeah that's how it goes yeah what no, you I, start with is never usually how it ends yeah no I I, I was happy with this when I when I finally usually used, here's my how it, my timeline I come up with a cool dish it's pretty simple I mm -hmm. love it then I the old Patrick brain takes over and I start adding too many things it doesn't need <laughs> and complicating it. And then at the end, I pull everything back to right. almost what the beginning was. Right. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. I, I, and I do that every time. Every time. Yeah. No, no. 90% of what I make goes through that same process. Right? Like, it's so, it's so weird. Yeah. It's almost like it just, you need to go through that suffering to like get that simple dish on the other end. But that's also how you make recipes you know you got to go through that process of testing mm -hmm. and trial and error and yeah. okay now it's here i can wipe my hands of it you know I mean, honestly you, know, you mentioned your wife and having your friends try things that's such a big part of developing your recipes too having other people taste it with their palates and their and giving you feedback that you may not notice yeah and i mean i and i tell folks like look be, don't bullshit me here. You exactly. Know I mean? You're don't. not going to help me out by telling me, oh, this is delicious. Exactly. Like, yes, I agree. Don't dude. bull. I'm like, I made some, I made some cacio e pepe one time and I'm rushing. And I dump like, I don't know, a quarter cup of salt in the water <laughs> to boil the pasta. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I don't have time to redo no, it. Yeah, yeah. Do don't it mind. out there. And like, oh, this is tasty. I was like, you're bullshitting you're me. Uh, like, I will never feed you again if you bullshit me. Yeah, it's yeah. salty as fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just say it, right? Exactly. Just I'm say like, it's gonna, salty. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I mean, you know, that's, yeah. that's what I'm here for. I'm going to hurt my feelings and say it's great and I throw it out to the masses and they're like, oh, this sucks, you know? Exactly. So. Yeah, because if you hear, oh, it's good, it's fine, what, how, how am I improving now? Exactly. I, I'm exactly. not improving with the fine. Or, exactly. This is great or it's amazing if it's not. Exactly. Because then I don't know what to believe, right? If it is amazing, I'll never know. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I'm with you. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. I'm I'm big proponent of that too. Just yeah. shoot it to me straight. That's why, like in the food truck game, like uh -huh. we'd be in a park, right? So you're working with five other food truck owners. So uh -huh. 
the key would be go let the other food truck over take because they're going to tell you uh, right. the truth because you're doing it for them, right? right? So you go give it to them. They go, no, no, too salt. Add some cheese. Add yeah. this, you know, no, no, this and that. They don't even look at you. Yeah. They eat it and just yeah. talk, right? And just, <laughs> just tell you what was wrong. Yeah. And you're like, cool, no problem. Yeah. You just that's slide real. it up on the top of the food. Hey, man, give this a quick right a quick taste you oh, know that's awesome, tell me man. what you think you know yeah. that's an advantage that if you're in a restaurant you don't really have that you just mm -hmm. got your cooks mm -hmm. who are depending if you're the head chef they may not feel comfortable with telling you something's off yeah no oh, chef everything's fine yeah. everything tastes great yeah oh. Yeah. Oh no! Oh no! You, you, oh no! We're we're in bad news if, if that's all you hear in the kitchen. Everything's fine, chef. It Everything's be fine. great. I mean, all that's right. what I tell people. You know, on social media, I'm like, you know, if you're not making some bad stuff, you're not really trying. You're not pushing the envelope. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the shrimp, dude. Yeah, do it, man. Do I'm it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm that. Do it. It's so good. Uh, yeah. I mean, you're trying to push the envelope. You're trying to make new stuff. You're trying to create new recipes. You know, I made one, um, what was it? It was some steak tacos with a chocolate sauce. Oh, wow. It was horrible. It was horrible. You know, it, was, it, it was beautifully photographed. Chocolate with, doesn't sound good with steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going like a mole, you know, and they're like, okay. do mole. I was like, well, no. Yeah. Mole is mole. I'm not yeah. trying to do mole. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I'm trying something different. I mean, you don't know until you do it. Well, I should have known. <laughs> I should have known in hell. Chocolate's a tough one. I was, I was probably smoking one night. I think and, a know. lot of people do that, though. You, <clears throat> you know, you try to play with chocolate because you're like, oh, nobody's been able to do it. I right. can, I'll, I'll, I will crack the code on there. There's a reason people don't do it, right? Like, there's a reason that certain flavors just go together. Absolutely. To, you know, just Absolutely. how it works, right? Absolutely. And there's nothing wrong with playing off of it. Right in a sense, right? right? Duck and apple. Okay, we, we know that these flavors can go together. Okay, yes. so what can we do with that? Yes. Right? How can we play off of that? Yes. And there's exactly. but there's nothing wrong with admitting that. Yeah. Like yeah. these core flavors. Right. You know? Right. So right. I don't right. Know. Yeah. It's uh for me cooking is all about how you approach it. Just with love, respect and open. Right. To new ideas right. and improving and you know what I mean? Yeah. What, what more what more do you want? And if you're yeah. not loving cooking you should stop, right? Like if it's well, painful. Right, right. I mean, there's, I think there's a lot of that. And I didn't really know that going into this, but you know, the way, um, you know, Bobby Flay and all these other celebrity chefs have created a lifestyle for themselves. People want that. Exactly. You know, they want that. And so they go into it for that. I mean, it's just the same as I saw it. I was a uh, sports agent for three years before I lost all my money trying to do that. You got guys going in there wanting the glory, but not wanting to put in the work. Sure. They want that. Yeah. And that's not, you know, that's not what it's about. You yeah, know, exactly. I tell people like, they ask me like one of my favorite dishes to cook, um, gumbo, because it involves the process. It involves stock. Yeah. Where you're taking scraps and you got that simmering for hours and yeah. it takes me standing over a stove making roux for like 45 minutes. Totally. Because I love the process. Layered you know, flavors. Yes. Yeah, if you don't love the process, you shouldn't be doing it. Exactly. If you, you don't know. love the process. Because... 99% of it is the process. It's the process. Right? Exactly. It's, look how quickly it took us to eat that. Exactly. Right? Eating it, it takes two seconds. Exactly. You you know, I remember working at these like tweezer food restaurants, you know, I call them. And <laughs> you'd walk up to the table in this beautifully constructed dish that's been put together. <laughs> and literally one dude with a fork will destroy it in two <laughs> seconds. Right? Just like, crow right. And just it's bam. <laughs> and the whole dish is gone. Right. You know, it, it took so long to put that together and then instantly right destroy, right so just like you said if you, you have to love the process yeah if you don't yeah. yes get out of it. also you're not helping you're not doing the person that's going to eat your food any favors yeah right because yeah. your emotion your attitude goes into the food yeah. right and if you have absolutely. a bad attitude and bad emotions it, your food will taste like absolutely. it i mean I'm, I'm i'm i get way too deep with it i'm weird in terms of like all my food like in the book you know, we ate all that shit. You know what I mean? It was no like, you know, staging. It should be, I want it to be a nice picture, but I want it to feel like you're sitting there about to eat it. You know, you, you're, you're at my kitchen table. I just slid this plate to you and you're about to eat it. You know, people don't yeah. eat pancakes in a dark room with a light shining, shining over them. I yeah. mean, let's, let's be real here. I mean, it looks gorgeous, but sure. that's not me. That's not, that's, yeah, that's yeah. you know. That's, that's a how real approach. I approach it. Yeah, that's a real approach. I, I honestly, I think it's endearing and what 
I think more people want to see moving forward. I really do. Because look at how Instagram and social media is. Yeah. Right? What yeah. is that engagement? Yeah. It's very all natural. I mean, some videos you see of people cooking will have so many views. It's ridiculous. And they're shooting on their iPhone. It's all blurry. Yeah. Everything's out. Because it doesn't. It's yeah. about what's on the other side of that. You know what I mean? That, that genuine endearing quality is what attracts people to it. So I think you may be onto something, man. Yeah. Like a new way of doing cookbooks, yeah. you know? Sort of throwing out the book, yeah, if you will. You know, I, you hope, know? I hope so. And I, you know, I, and the, some of the feedback was like, yeah, it's, it's, I didn't think it was quite as different as, I, I didn't, it's not as different as I wanted it to be, let's sure. put it like that. So yeah. I didn't think it was quite that different. Like, no, yeah, we really like, you know, you know more of the, I don't know, style, I don't know, what's, what's it called, styling, but basically just seeing different viewpoints of terms in terms of what you're seeing in the normal list, like here's a fork and a plate, you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. And the story behind it. So that's, that was my, my goal, was that just, I'm just going to be real, you know, hopefully people like it, they like it, if they don't, they don't, you know, that's all I can do. Dude, if this is you being real, I don't see how you, anybody would hate this, like, it's absolutely delicious. I appreciate no, man. it, man, thank uh, you so yeah. much. What, um, I tell you what, tell people just like how to... How to get the book, how to, how to stay, okay. you know, how to follow you, how to stay in contact with you. Uh, cook, drank, D-R-A-N-K, because we drank around here. Cook, drank, eat, uh, dot com, and all the socials. So if you can find the book there, if you want an autographed copy, I've got, which is, still seems weird, but, you know, if you want an autographed copy, you can order it there. Otherwise, all the major retailers um, are available on cookdrankeat.com, and that's all my socials, uh, you know, Instagram, um, um, YouTube, you know. TikTok, cook, drink, eat. Bam. All right. Hope you enjoyed this episode with Chef Scotty Scott. Coming up on next week's episode, we have a surprise. Yes, I can't tell you about it. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. We have a surprise episode, surprise topic. I'm so excited. I, I, I just, I can't even tell you about it. So just stay tuned uh, for what that's going to be about. And if it goes well, we're going to do more of them. What is it, you ask? You're going to have to wait. All I'll say, this is all I'll say. There, if you can, I'm not even saying anything. I'm just showing you something. If you see that, if you can't, if you're listening, I'm making an X with my arms. That's all I'll say. All right, guys, listen, uh, until next week, thank you so much for watching and supporting it means everything to us. Thank you to the crew who makes all this happen behind the scenes, editors, writers, graphic designers, all of that stuff. Nebina, the podcast manager, she deserves a special shout out. So anyway, thank you all so much for everything and we'll see you guys next week. Okay, as always, stay Lone Star. See you then. The Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, visit our website, lonestarplate.show. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time.